So you have got a 24 hour exam coming up. It's online. Maybe you've had experience of it briefly before, or maybe this is your very, very first time. Regardless, I wanted to give you some hints and tips and ideas of particularly good ways that you might get yourself prepared for that big day. Because you're probably used to, you know, many of us, as we spent our lives in education, and we're quite used to that idea of the, the traditional exam. You know, you prepare, you do all of your revision, you get your revision notes together, and you go and you sit in an exam hall for two or three hours, and you write down everything that you can possibly remember. And what you might find in that preparing yourself for the online exam is that actually the same skills don't quite apply. It kind of feels somewhere between that and a more conventional piece of individual assessment. So what we want to think about is how do you organise yourself best? What do you do when you're actually uh, you know, preparing yourself in the run up? And this might be that you've got a week to go. It might be that you've just got a few days to go. It might be that you're just looking to get your notes organised. And hopefully there'll be some little tips and tricks in here that will just give you some peace of mind that you're on the, you're on the right track. First things first, I'm going to start real, real basic, and that is about getting yourself organised. And that's partly about getting yourself organised in terms of the material that you have available to you. And it's partly about getting yourself organised for the day. After that, I'll move on to talking about the content. So that will be how do you actually do that? You know, in t traditionally, you just revise whatever's written on the lecture slides and then you kind of figure out it when you're in there and you just put it all together. I'm going to give you a more structured way of preparing that content. And then I'll give you some advice for what to do on the actual day afterwards as well. So starting off beforehand, making sure that you have everything prepared and ready. The first one I would say is ensure that you know everything that there is to know about this online exam. That sounds like a really basic thing to say, but what happens a lot of the time is we get given a load of information and we take away just the headline news about it. Oh, it's 24 hours or, oh, it's based on a couple of questions that are somewhere. You probably heard about that a few weeks ago. And since then, there's probably been more information that's come out about it. Some of it that you might have read, some of that you might have filed, but you probably haven't consistently pulled it all together. Please go away and find all of that information and put it all in either one document or one folder. Download anything that is to do with that exam and try and understand the form of it as best you can. What are they asking of you? How many questions have you got to do? What will those questions be on? Are they specific or is it going to be completely uh, in the lap of the gods as to what would, what would come up? So understanding what might some indicative questions be. Have any of them been released? What is the marking grid? What are you actually expected to do when you're in there? Normally a marking grid will ask you to, for particular skills in theory or analysis or critical evaluation. So what is the marking grid actually asking you to do? What is the suggested word count? You know, all of these little points and bits and pieces, pick this up as much as possible. Perhaps the module leaders have released a frequently asked questions document about it. Fantastic. Go away and read that. But in the first stages, it's don't assume that you know everything about this online exam because you've probably forgotten a bunch of stuff and now's the time to go and look at it. And even if you're right at the end, um, please, please go and look because it's so easy to, to miss those little bits of detail. And now you're in the mindset, there'll mean much more to you. Uh, the second thing that I would say about getting yourself organised is also plan how you're going to spend that day. And I don't mean right now in terms of the amount of hours that you're going to spend on it, but I mean, work out in advance, and this sounds, I'll explain why I'm being so granular in this. Work out where you're going to be doing this piece of work. Work out, so are you doing it at home? If you're doing it at home, where exactly are you going to be doing it? Figure out all of your technology. Does your technology work as well as you want it to? Do you need to get rid of some stuff off your computer to make sure that it's going nice and fast so you can access what you need to access? Make sure your technology is all working and is all up to speed. You don't want to be having to solve problems like that on the day. But also, I would recommend figuring out exactly in advance what you're going to eat and what you're going to wear. Wear something that makes you take yourself very seriously. So wear something, you know, if I'm ever doing something like this, I'll, I'll dress up more than I normally would have going to university. I'm going to take myself seriously then. And getting in the right mindset is going to be key. Also figure out what you're going to eat. 
And the reason I say these things, and they sound so silly, but the reason I say these things is that your aim here is to reduce the number of decisions that you have to make on that day. You don't want to be making any decisions. You should know exactly what time you're waking up. You should know exactly what you're wearing. Everything, everything all done. That is a habit of highly successful people. So make sure you do it. All those decisions out of the way first. You don't want to wake up and think, oh, what time is the exam again? Or, oh, right, what am I going to have for breakfast? No, all sorted. And all of your creative brain, your conceptual brain, everything will be able to go onto that exam rather than any anything else interfering. So that's before the, before the day. Also before the day, you're obviously going to want to think about how to revise and, and how to, and to organise your, your revision. And my suggestions to you are to think about uh, content and preparing content in different ways. One of the ways that people like to prepare themselves is that they like to write out great long answers in order to copy and paste directly across. Fantastic! That is a really, really good solution if they ask you that exact same question that you're planning on. If they ask you something else, you are going to find it really hard to unpick that huge document and to put it together again in any sort of legible fashion. It's not always a, a particularly useful approach to, to, to go about doing that. Remember that what you're doing in the exam, your aim in that 24 hour exam is to create or to make or to construct an answer. And you construct an answer out of bits. You don't just copy and paste an answer out of some huge thing, some huge document. So what might those bits be? Uh, arguably, you've got the first bit, which is building block knowledge. Building block knowledge is uh, the foundations of what the concept is. So are there particular models that you're meant to be looking at? If there are particular models, then you're going to have one document that's just titled whatever you want, basic or foundations or building blocks. And you're going to explore and you're just going to have little bits, little sections with some keywords in there so you can search for it later. And those little sections are just being descriptive of the model. Perhaps they're giving some evaluations in terms of strengths and weaknesses, but it's really just the kind of theoretical aspects of it. So this is the, the, the stuff of your, um, of your work. So we've got stuff, then we've got examples. And with most um, uh, of these 24 hour exams, you're not just gonna be talking about theory, you're gonna be talking about how to use that theory in practice. So with your examples, don't try and, you know, you shouldn't be reading your case study on the day if it's been released to you in advance already. Um, if you, you have the case study already, Go through and just pick out the most significant bits. Aim for lots more than you'll end up needing, because of course, like a normal exam, you're not going to use everything that you're, that you're recording. But just pick out key points, because that means you can start to amass evidence. And depending on whatever you're asked, you'll be able to pick the relevant parts out. And this is when you can start constructing the answer. And then the final part, so if you've got your, your building blocks, your examples, you might also think about your arguments. So are there any particular arguments that your module leader has spoken about throughout the module about, let's say, you know, often it's about complexity or about contextual factors. Are there any particular arguments that they've been really keen on and have, have gone the whole way through the module? And if there are, then make sure you've got them in a document as well, because this is the sort of thing that might feature in your summary, in your discussion, and could be a good linking thread to bring it all together. And broadly speaking, that is your, what you've got is theory and knowledge, your building blocks, you've got your analysis, and then you've got your critical evaluation. And if it was me, I would be literally creating three separate documents that I've got nice key search terms in there. I've, I've uh, done evidence of further reading. You know, it's going to be an expectation, of course, that because you've got loads of time to be able to start creating this, you're not just relying on lecture notes. Actually, you're doing further reading as well. Um, if you don't like writing them out in a document, perhaps you could draw it out as a mind map. Or maybe you create your document and a mind map so you know where to find things and you know where to locate things. And that will help you to be able to create a rough structure when you actually go into the, um, into the exam. And a, and a final analogy for that is to think of it, how would you prepare for an interview? 
if you're going in for a job interview, you don't prepare exact answers. Maybe some you do, a couple, but broadly speaking, if you prepare exact answers, you're either gonna come across as a robot or you're gonna miss the point of the questions and you're not actually gonna be able to show your sense of uniqueness and you're not really gonna answer the question because you're gonna be answering the question that's in your head rather than what they've asked you. And that's the same thing with an online exam. Make sure you are answering what they ask you to do. So in an interview, what you do is you prepare a bunch of stories and depending on what they ask you, you're gonna come back with a particular story and a particular framing of a story. So I would prepare for it in the same way that you would be preparing for that interview. You amass your information and then on the day, all you have to do is stitch it together and have that conceptual, that conceptual work. Final points then, um, in terms of how you should organise your, your day. We've spoken about the bit beforehand in making sure that your day is planned, making sure you've got all the content and making sure that you understand the form of the, the, the online exam. The fast one, uh, the last ones, fast ones. Well, that's 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 appropriate. Um, don't try and speed through it, but equally, don't spend all day on this. The temptation with a twenty-four hour exam is to say I should spend twenty-four hours on it. No, the reason it's a twenty-four hour exam is often to account for things like time zones. So it's not expected that you're going to spend twenty-four hours on it. It's to allow people, um, depending on how they like to work, they can work on it at particular times of the day. But what will happen? is that you will have, you'll start off and you'll have a bit of a dip in, in performance of what your excellent performance would be because you're just trying to work things out. Then you'll go up and up and up and up and you'll get to a really, really good point where you'll be firing on all cylinders. The temptation is to just stay there and is just to stay working and to keep at it. But you will inevitably drop down again. So please remember to take very good, long, nicely structured breaks where you go and sit down, or ideally, you know, go and have a walk about, go and chat with some friends, go and hang out, go and get yourself out of the headspace of the exam. Because you wouldn't sit down and do an essay all in one go, you would do it in little bits and pieces. And an exam, a 24 hour exam is just a concentrated version of that. So make sure that you structure in some time for break and that actually allows your brain to really switch into a different gear. For me, I really like going driving as well. Like driving always clears my head because I'm concentrating sort of on something. Um, and that means that the other thing that's in my head doesn't have to be front and center. And I can often think really creatively about it while I'm driving. So they find the thing that really works for you in terms of getting your creative brain flowing. So make sure that you do that. And then people often ask about how much time should you spend on the, on the um, online exam. And this is a difficult question to answer um, and different people will work in different ways, I'm afraid to say. I would say as a, as a barometer, start with how long you would normally spend on an exam. So think of this as you know two or three hours of a core amount of work and then you can add time from there. But don't think of this as, you know, I'm gonna have to spend, if I've got three questions that I'm gonna have to spend you know, eight hours per question, it would, be, it would be madness to do that. So just make sure that you're focusing on spending that amount of time and then you can add bonus and, and extra time afterwards. And that's gonna keep you nice and focused, nice and on point. And that friends is my advice for you preparing for your online exam. Good luck with everything. As long as you follow these sorts of steps and as long as you get yourself nice and prepared in advance, don't over prepare, but make sure that you've got all of those pieces, those blocks in place, you're going to do great. So good luck with it all. and I hope it goes really, really well for you.